Good to see you guys back with the attachments. They're getting sold. It's, it's a real treat. There's a whole other reason why we don't see those. Man, it's like a... <laughs> is this a knife? You just slide the tool on, a big washer. One of the fittings got over tightened and stripped uh. the thread. Looks like everyone's in the office right now, so let's check in on them and see what they're doing. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, Megan. Hey, guys. <laughs> what are we looking at over here? What's going on? Well, I'm actually teaching Sean how to do 3D cutting and... Um, for the burn table? For the burn table. Oh, yeah, okay. No, no sorry, for the water jet. Oh, the water uh, burn jet. Burn table only cuts um, 2D cutting, oh. and water jet can cut 2D cutting in 3D cutting. Now, um, we are cutting something for, for our excavator to test on. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Did you, yeah. hear we're, we're, did you hear that us two, we're going to be operating an excavator soon? I heard that. <laughs> we were actually in the excavator yesterday. Yeah, we went to you Grand know. Island and we got to see it in person. It's crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was very muddy, but... I have no idea what I'm doing in here. Can you explain, in your best words, like the difference between a, like a 2D and a 3D cut? Yeah, so a 2D is just straight down. A 3D would be if you need a blade where it's two pieces that come to a point. You can't cut straight down because it won't be sharp. Right, right. So for things that need that, you need to have it cut down at an angle and then cut back at another angle, okay. creating a point on the actual metal. That makes sense. So. That sounds kind of complicated. It's a 2D image, you need a 3D. Okay. It takes a lot more setup, but. Yeah. I mean, you so it's just, it's more so when you're doing, when you have to set up for a 3D cut, it's more so the yep, part the in the office, part the computer part takes a lot more work. Yeah. Setup's and pretty much the same once here. Once it's in on here, yep, the machine the, does the machine all the hard knows. work. Okay, yep. yep, perfect. Looks like you're adding a torque control on this. This is a P1045, and you've, you've added this onto there. Well, I, this was a torque control. We just changed it from an LO comp to an AM comp. What we're doing is we're adding torque controls to these three. I was in uh, at Parker when they were developing these, and they were saying that they, the, to get those ports in here down below here the, for, for the uh, torque cartridge in there, so this just uh, is uh, against the swash plate, uh, they were struggling to make everything fit with the sizes and, and the room required for the control and all that. Yep. So it, this was the very last of the ones to get it added on. Well, yeah, to do all the easy ones first. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the 140s, the big guys, they all did those first, and then the 45s, the smallest. I don't think they even have a torque on any, any unit smaller. I think I might say that on that. Usually it says it in the engineering books. Yeah, so the torque limit is only available from the 45 to the 100. Yeah, they probably would have liked to put it on the smaller sizes as well. And the torque control uses up uh, some of the oil. So it if you have a torque control on there, it's slightly less efficient. And I believe that once you get into the very smaller sizes, the more that efficiency becomes an issue. And I think that the key to then is order more with torque controls. Yeah. So then you don't have to do this, because it's a lot of work. It's quite the, you know, assembly on there. It gives you lots of options too with that block too. You can put a, man up, you can put a proportional valve on there and control it and do all kinds of neat shit. Right, so this block is from the, this B mod because they didn't have this on the, on the uh, A mod. They had like an AN control, which wasn't a very common one. That was way uh, proportional relief. Then they would use a large block like this. But they put this block on here to try to get... Room. Yeah, basically room, exactly. It's a good control. Yeah, this is the old Denison control, so we don't want to... We, we, li we like them because uh, you know, we've been dealing with them for, for 35 years. But yeah, a lot of people don't know, this was, this was actually a Denison series before Parker bought it. It was a, uh, the Denison XL. The XL series. But we almost never saw it. I, I don't remember it be, being here when I was a kid. From what I remember, the XL series was in production when Parker was in the process of taking them over. So they put off putting the XL series out under the Parker name and brought it out as the P1 series. Okay. I think that's But, but do you remember, like, you've been here for... 26 years. Do you remember in your first couple of years seeing XL series come in? I remember going uh, probably five years going to Parker for a vein course and they were talking about this was the new stuff coming out. Mm. But we didn't see a whole lot of them because I think that's when Parker was well, in the version of they, they, also they also had those challenge cups. Yeah, there, there's a whole other reason why we don't see those. Yeah. We had inventory. We scrapped uh, 
that stuff was so old. Like, yeah. I think it was all obsolete in 20 years before we got it. Yeah. Needle scale, is that what you're doing? Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's just getting rid of all the little, uh, none of the skins, all the scales. Does it produce a better, better finish? Uh, yeah. to, to, to weld onto? Yeah. Uh, it's good for a better penetration. So just a stronger weld? Yes, stronger weld, yeah. What happens if you don't use it? Does it can it kind of flake off a bit? Or? Yeah, it kind of flake off and we, we can, uh, from the sound of the weld. Oh, you can actually tell, like, you can tell when you're welding, if it's been... Yeah, uh, like, if you... scaled? Scaled, yeah. If it needs to be scaled, you like, uh, you can find it from the sound of the weld. Huh. Okay, like, a little bit, like, more crispier sound. Ah. Is it, is, it, is it like a pleasant sound to you when it's just perfect? Yeah. Like a, when it's a perfect well, it's like a... <laughs> it's just a nice, nice crisp like sound, eh? Okay. Let's see in action. <laughs> Isn't this just great, though? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I think this is great just seeing you guys back with the attachments. They're getting sold. It's, it's, a real, it's, it's a real treat. Here's the tool that we made to remove the max volume stops off of the PV because they have this weird like a dual pin thing. Like it's just a, it's a two dowels. Uh, so now to get this off, do you... Do you hit it with a hammer? No, you do not hit this part here. You just hit the end of the handle, you use the leverage to move it. If you want to do it properly, you need to take something that would basically cover more surface area and try to distribute the pressure that way instead of a hammer, just tiny little blows. Oh, just because it looks... Distorting it, yeah. It looks, it looks unprofessional. Yeah, right, exactly. Okay. But I guess really the best way then, we just put this on first, right? Yes. You put it on first and you just try it. Try it first, yeah. Uh, There's a sequence that has to happen. First, you have to remove this. Yeah. Because the two bolts that hold this on will be in the way to rotate that. Yeah. So you pull this off, and then you use a 7 8 and you crack that nut loose. We were fumbling around with this for an hour uh, in Buffalo when we were first starting to do this stuff. And so they had to, they had to just give it a good crack to, to break this sort of seal in here. But I guess... The machine nut? That tool? We, yeah, we made this. When you, when you start, you have to remove this so it doesn't interfere with this handle rotating. And then you crack this and this is just not loose. And this is just a cover, right? For the, yeah, just for the through drive cover? Yeah, through drive cover. Mm -hmm. And the reason you crack this first is because it's too hard to crack it loose after this is uninstalled. This is tight enough in the pump that this is really easy to get it rotating if you do it first. Then you put the dowels in so there's no chamfer going in. You just slide the tool on, big washer, and then you just put a nut to hold in place. And when it's held steady, it's real easy to get a nice solid blow on it. And that will cause it to come loose. When this is solid, it's a much more direct hit, more pressure is applied. Mm. And it breaks it free much easier. We need to tweak it a little bit with this uh, contour. So now I have another one that has to be down there if you wanted to start with something new. Same side. I never get my hands dirty, so I'm just using this opportunity to yep i had somebody ask me to lay down a bead on for the weld yes <laughs> <laughs> all right what, so how do you do this next that's a 14 millimeter you would unscrew that uh, then you would have a washer that has to be removed and then there's the contour sleeve that would come out hmm. and then we'd replace the contour sleeve with a different contour sleeve depending on what torque control right. the customer is looking for and that contour sleeve is what that uh, ldvt or LVDT, yes. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's what it sits has on. To be removed, and then we'll put a torque control cartridge in here after this has all been reassembled. Right. This torque control is always the first thing to come out and the last thing to go in. It's the okay. easiest thing to break if you do it wrong. Yeah. All right, thanks. Okay, let's go uh, see if we got this here. So what happened with this guy? This is the D11. It's a aluminum body and it's specialized. It's very short frame, so like an extremely yes. small space. I see a lot in like steering systems. Why is it here? So we did a rotation change on it and when we went to test it, uh, there was a 
one of the fittings got over tightened and stripped uh, the threads. Okay. And because these are fairly low pressure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's pretty nasty. Yes. Was it with the wrench? Is that they just yes. they just used too big of a wrench or just bad feel? What was uh, it? It could have been bad feel. Okay. Yeah. Just not careful enough. Uh, do we have more in stock though? Uh, because these, these are owed to a customer, right? Correct. Correct. And it we're says gonna, priority on there. Yes. So we're going to. One is going to be good enough to ship. Okay. And I'm sure one will get them out of a jam. I want to get a ship today. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so we'll have to have to see though. Maybe increase stock of these. Yes. Uh, this is like it's just such a simple product line. We stock both rotations and different shafts as well. What are those used on? Like the I, I think it's I think they're they're commonly in some sort of mobile equipment. The only one the application that I know of are the, the what I said earlier the steering systems. So it's like something under you know under the dash or something like that. A very very tight space. Yeah, I'm I'm personally not as familiar with these. I don't work on these all that much, so. But yeah, it's I one of those things that still work with them. Yeah, it's one of those things. People just order it and then you know, we ship it to them. We don't really ask a whole lot of questions. They don't tell us a lot. Exactly. They should. They should tell us more. Yes. We want to know. Nice. Hey, I'm Adele. I've been creating content with LiftGo for over a year and a half now. We just hit 10,000 subscribers, so we want to thank you. We're thanking you because we get to do what we love. Let's go watch some throwbacks. That's a that's a hundred percent connection. You're gonna hate it. Try and Jeez. do this. No, you try and do it. So do you think you can pick up a dime? <laughs> oh, there we go. That's the bearing. Yep. This is everything that arrived today oh. for our stock. Why do I smash things? Yeah. It's the safeguard so the pump doesn't blow up. You need to and this pump is rated to approximately 5,000 PSI. We have a content team that's generating content just for you. support. As a growing content team, we're always looking for ways to improve. If you guys want to see more informal, educational, longer, shorter, more technical, less technical, anything else in the videos, let us know. We appreciate your feedback, so leave us a comment down below on how we can improve.